it's not to be underestimated the way that the debate has been has been opened up because it is one of those things that when events happen, when there's extreme weather events happen, um, we don't want a situation where it's the Daily Mail that dominates the debate in the workplaces and you know, provides the explanation or the interpretation about why those extreme weather events have happened. We want the knowledge to be there within the trade union movement and hence that gives people the confidence that this is something we need to fight and we can fight, that we won't end up being victims, we'll be at the forefront of the struggle to change our society. Thanks very much, Manuel. I'm going to um, now hand over to, uh, to Bill, Bill Adams, who's Regional Secretary of Yorkshire and Humber uh, TUC. I think Bill's got some really, really interesting things to say, and I heard a little bit about it at the weekend, Bill, when we went to our trade union uh, group meeting of the campaign against climate change. Um, He's been involved with setting up a new low carbon industry strategy, uh, which is centrally involved trade unionists, and it's, it is opening those kind of debates and that kind of way forward that we've just been talking about. So, Bill, hand over to you, please. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. <coughs> and, uh, and thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. And despite being an employee, current employee of the TUC, um, I watched the debate yesterday, and, uh, and so some of my words will be guarded to death tonight. But uh, I'm generally. Uh, I'm generally on side, um, and, and there's, there's a few reasons for that actually. Um, I became involved um, with the EU project, uh, which picked out seven industrial regions across Europe, and it just so happened that Leeds and the Ur Valley, uh, where I work, was one of them. You know, Poland, you know, was just kind of other different places across. But we can be developing a strategy to look at the carbon targets, look at how it would affect industry, so that's been why I got involved. And I've got to say to people, you know, until recently, I'm not a climate change denier, but I never really took uh, much notice of uh, what was going on with other things. Uh, but some of the things that have opened my eyes, particularly in the work that I do, uh, involved a trip to North Africa. Um, we were taken to an oasis. Uh, and shown a film of what that oasis looked like 10 years ago. There were 34 different cold water springs. And if, if anybody's had kids, you know, remember what the kids used to watch on telly, it was like the Green Valley. You could have just imagined a dinosaur eating some, you know, foliage <coughs> from some beautiful trees. And now it's got one spring that they took us to, which bubbled out a poisonous mix of water. And that brought it on, so they haven't had any rain for seven years. And it's completely ruined it. And that kind of weather is heading for the Mediterranean. So, you know, that opened my eyes to, God, this is a real problem. And then in Leeds, you know, around Yorkshire, we've had storms and floods like we've never had before. We've had whole cities under water. Leeds, Sheffield, Hull, you know, York, and Raglan gets flooded. So, it's become, it become part of my uh, my job's you know, spectrum to actually do something about it. So we, we've had, you know, this, this, this concept of just transition. I think like Manuel said, you know, it means nothing to people who are thrown on the scrap heap. You know, ask the miners in our region. Ask the steel people who have thrown out of work uh, over the last few decades about just transition. You know, they can get a kick in. I won't mention it in, in, in the clubs around Featherstone, you know, because you will get a kick in. But what we've got to do is we've got to explain to the unions that just transition and helping on the climate change front is actually in their interests. And in Yorkshire, uh, we've come up with a figure of uh, immediate jobs at risk just from not meeting the targets of Paris. We've got glass. We've got cement, we've got power stations, uh, we've got chemical factories. We are the biggest polluter in the country. And so it's, 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 it's essential that we get you know, a proper strategy in the region, not just within the union, but with the employers and with the authorities. And what we've been doing there is, well, 25,000 jobs at risk, which means probably around about 100,000 people in our region alone will be affected economically if we don't do anything. Because those places are either going to go offshore to some other country where it's cheaper and they don't have the same rules as us, or we have to sort of have new processes, invest in new technology, 
and get and keep, keep those industries going, but you know, not polluting the environment. And most of those workplaces in Yorkshire, they're all highly unionised. They've got high union density. They've got pretty good industrial relations. You know, I went to Drax Power Station uh, to have a look around a few weeks ago and spoke to the unions there. There didn't seem to be many industrial relations problems. Taking along pretty well, well paid, good skills, all the rest of it. So, you know, we've got to actually work, I think, right across the spectrum uh, to actually change the targets. We've also been working and trying to work on carbon capture, which is very important. We were on the verge of building a pipeline, taking carbon out under the North Sea in the, uh, in the old gas fields. The technology was there. Government, we got money from the EU. We were ready to build a new coal-fired power station to be carbon-free, and then the government pulled the plug. And so there's supposed to be another decision in November. I'm not hopeful, Congress, that that's going to be uh, positive at all because this government is just a washing its hands and letting the market rule. And uh, as we said before, you know, the corporates and the people that make these big profits, they don't live in these, you know, they don't live with us, they, they're off on their islands and they and the safe life of the yachts and all the rest of it. And exploiting our planet and exploiting our workforce is everyday stuff to do. So we've got a form a we've got a form a group of trade unions, but they get the unions to agree. What we saw yesterday, they don't all agree yet. Uh, but we're working on it, and I think in our region, in the main, uh, most of them are positive about this project. And we've also got partnerships with the local LEPs. We've got four of them, well, local enterprise partnerships with all the other uh, We've got four of them in our region. They've all signed up to a regional economic strategy, which talks about just trying to, I think we're the first kind of laps to do that. And they're very, very interested in working as a collective uh, to implement uh, this kind of project. So, you know, the strategy for the region is to bring about uh, agreement between unions, employers, and uh, the authorities. Uh, I suppose that's what we can do, or region, whatever you want to call it, whatever shape or form it was. And uh, we've actually stepped back since we abolished the RDA. The RDA was the driver behind the pipeline for carbon capture and storage. That's now gone, we've got to deal with new tiers of government. But it, I have to say that the people in Yorkshire are really going for it from where the meeting arranged in October, where we're bringing the main union people involved in the representation of those workers together with the LEPs and together with the employers. So we're making progress, it's a long road ahead, I think. <coughs> we are starting to make progress, it's good news, and let's hope it takes a lot, you know, it's a lot quicker than we, uh, we, than we think, and we can actually start seeing some positive results. And just one more thing before I finish, the visit to Drax Power Station was quite uh, interesting because it was a, it's the biggest coal uh, power station in, the country, in Europe. Uh, they're now down to 50% and um, I asked the guy about biofuel, I said, well, how does that affect carbon? I'm not scientist. He said, it gets rid of about 80%. And whilst it's not the ideal for the future, at least it makes a contribution at this point. And I think that's positive, while other renewables, new types of energy, new processes, and investing in new technology. Well, that gets off the ground, it's certainly a start. So we're rolling in Yorkshire, and uh, we need everybody's support for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.